Hello, welcome to The Truths with me and Russell Brand, where I continue to have an online spat with Sean Hannity from Fox News. A trivial a conflict, which actually has as its background the worst conflict on the planet that has lasted for millennia. Let's see how Sean Hannity responded to my um, Truths criticism of him. <laughs> Welcome back to Hannity. All right, yesterday, Russell Brand, a D-list actor, better known for his failed marriage to Katy Perry, recorded himself going on a 12 and a half minute tirade against little old me. He's already got into trouble by trying to present himself sympathetically as little old me when he's started off mendaciously and vindictively playing one of Katy's pop songs and going, mostly famous for his failed marriage. That's a mean-spirited approach. But in the background, there's like Hamas and Hollywood. Like, so it's about this serious thing and Sean's sort of trivialising it. Maybe it's my fault because I did say accurately that he looks like uh, the Kendall from Toy Story 3. You will now check that and we'll know that it was right. Sean's upset about it, but... I feel so bad that Russell doesn't like my style of interviewing. That's not a style of interviewing that Sean's got. That's, he doesn't like my style of interviewing. It's not a style of interviewing. It's because he got that bloke on, that Youssef fella, to talk for Muslim people, then didn't let him answer. It's not a style of... What's your style of interviewing, Sean? I don't let people respond to questions that I ask them and then I bully them and berate them and victimise them and just advance my own agenda aggressively. Well, that's an interesting style. It's not a style of doing it. That's not doing it. 3,000 rockets, Russell, fired into Israel, two-thirds of the Israeli population in bunkers in just the last month. Now, Russell, if you're watching, and I'm sure you will, take a close look at your TV because I need to educate you because you're kind of dumb and ignorant. Now, this, what I'm about to show you, to educate you is the charter of the interna internationally recognized if you are going to educate someone don't mispronounce basic components of the english language this is the international chapter of the, of the interna internationally recognized right but i'm looking forward to the education i'll read it with you to help you i'm all here sure i'm ready to learn maybe like education can come from any place maybe this Peculiar bigoted man has within him some sacred knowledge that will come bubbling to the surface. Israel will exist and will continue to exist until Islam will obliterate it, just as it obliterated others before it. In fact, Hamas will seek to destroy Israel at any cost, even by using fellow Palestinian women and children as human shields. Do you see Danny? He held up a little bit of the Hamas charter, which is said underneath it was in 1988, which of course was called it was full of sort of quite aggressive rhetoric, obliterate Israel and all that kind of stuff. But remember that Hamas probably are defending the idea of the territory that existed before Israel was placed on top of where they live. They're probably really angry. Then what Sean does is something really interesting. He has the text up of the Hamas charter, then he moves seamlessly into his opinion about human shields. I'll tell you why he has to do that as opinion, because there's no evidence that Hamas are using women and children as human shields. No one there has said that's happening, except for people like Sean Hannity. But apparently Russell can't get it through his thick head and possibly fathom that this is a reality. It's not a reality. It's a, a combination of speculation, conjecture, and highly contextualised and selected information. That's not reality. He's piecing together a narrative that fits in with Fox's worldview and his own bigoted worldview. That's not reality. It's a tiny aperture through which bigoted and particular information is glimpsed. That's sort of the opposite of all-encompassing, wonderful, unknowable reality. And joining us now is Bernard McGurk. Hello, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with bigots having a good laugh together. Hello, Ken. <laughs> Oh, you guys. If Sean's having a panel, we're having a panel on the truths. With me, I've got uh, Jesus. There he is, smiley mask Jesus. Uh, a bunch of flowers and uh, Mahatma Gandhi. They're all joining us. Gandhi, ironically, would have been dubbed as a terrorist by Sean Hannity because of his opposition to the sanctioned power of the British Empire when the Indian independence movement kicked out British colonies. That's a good point, Russell. Uh, I was going to say, Brian got that one right anyway. I know, it's a compliment. <laughs> it's a compliment. It is a compliment to look like uh, the Kindle from Toy Story 3. None of us thought that he wasn't handsome. We just thought he was plastic, stupid, superficial, vacuous and vain. Not bad, not bad. Well, he refers to me as a terrorist. I actually have that side. You want to watch this part? You'll notice in this segment, they don't use any of the original footage of Sean interviewing Youssef because if they did use that you would see how unreasonable Sean was being, remember? 
At is Hamas point. a terrorist organization? Yes Let or no? Let me ask you a question, no, sir. No, you don't point. answer a question with a question. Is Hamas... What part of this can't you get through your thick head? I think is I, Hamas a terrorist organization? Me? That poor guy, Yusef, I love him a little bit as a result of that. Please, Sean. Oh, God, what's Sean done now? He punched me. Okay. I mean, t he, this guy's got a, a skanky look. He looks like he cooks meth and sleeps in his car. I wouldn't be calling. <laughs> <laughs> Drug addiction is a real issue. That's not a derisory remark to be banded around. I'm 11 years clean in recovery. People are dying of drug addiction all the time. It's an attitude of non-compassion, of hatred and antipathy. He's a doofus, which is unfortunate, and his attack on you unwarranted. Still, I think that there are two sides to this story that are not necessarily being Geraldo, told. 3,000 rockets, three kidnapped kids slaughtered. 1,300 oh, dead civilians, 30, 40 percent of them children, Sean. Will, this well, is well, undermining well, Israel. This is the worst thing for Israel's stature and standing in the world. Geraldo, it's fueling anti-Semitism, and it's going to accomplish Geraldo? very, very little but prolong this crisis. If... Uh-oh, it's got a bit wrong already, Sean. Sean's engineered this. He's got, can you come and help me take care of that out of work? Dealist, Katy Perry, married to son of a bitch, Russell Brand. Yeah, we'll be there. Within minutes of the start, Geraldo Rivera saying it's a complex issue in the Middle East and that Sean's being redacted. If 3,000 rockets were fired into America, wouldn't you obliterate the infrastructure of the group responsible? Would you call Michael for that? Michael Bloomberg came home from Israel last week saying, open the airport, these rockets are ineffective, the Iron Dome's got them solid. How many civilians have been killed by those rockets? Should I'll tell you, one Israeli Arab in the field. They didn't explain to Geraldo what his job was meant to be. He obviously didn't see this bizarre fascistic logo of the show. He's not spent any time watching Sean. Sure. He's come out and spoken like a reasonable human being. You have seen what happened in that hospital. We've seen what happened at the UN school today, Sean. We can no longer ignore what oh is my happening. God. I, I, the thing is, with, like, as we've said before, like words like terrorism. You, at the time of the American Revolution, the American revolutionaries that beat, you know, us, Britain, they would, we regarded them as terrorists. We're like, oh, hey, what are they doing? We're in charge of that colony. They wanted to be independent. We regarded them as terrorists. Terrorists just a word. Nelson Mandela before he's like, oh, lovely old cuddly Nelson Mandela. Terrorist. It's evocative and provocative and one-sided and a kind of dictatorship of language. There can be no peace anywhere till the most powerful side is prepared to make concessions and prepared to yield. And any kind of colonialism, any kind of land grab, any kind of control of resources, water, electricity, power, or to deny people their autonomy, is going to be eventually met with some kind of violence and then be adjusted as terror because as long as they behave as aggressors, the situation can only be perpetuated unless you want to annihilate every single person in Gaza, wipe them from the face of the planet and go, right, there you go, that's the end of it. That's the other alternative, I suppose. I do actually have something to, to say about that, because particularly to get back to these celebrities that are pro-Palestine and increasingly anti-Israel, because they increasingly sound just like Russell Brand, like they're drinking cocktails yeah. of stupidity and bigotry. I sound delicious. Where did you get yours? These because ignorant of... stars, though, don't want peace. You had a hundred Spanish stars, including Penelope Cruz and Javier Bardem, wrote an open letter accusing Israel of genocide. We ought to be very, very afraid about what's I, going I, on I in Europe. Be, you know what's the real problem here is Penelope Cruz and Javier Bardem and the bloke that was Puss in Boots in Shrek. Javier Bardem characterized the war as one of occupation and extermination against a people without means, confined to a minimum of land, without water and where hospitals, ambulance and children are targets and alleged terrorists. In the horror of what's happening now in Gaza, there is no place for distance or neutrality. I cannot understand this barbarism, even more brutal and incomprehensible considering all of the horrible things the Jewish people have gone through in the past. Javier, you ignorant star with your talk of peace. You know what's scary? Everything's backwards. I got to tell you, if you don't have more moral clarity that Israel has the right to defend themselves here, Bernie, I think right. this world is screwed Israel up beyond any... Held... Sean, the truth is, it isn't screwed up beyond the point of recovery. Recovery is possible. But you are not helping, Sean. You're making it much worse. But what about when he's on his own? That's what I always think. I think he's a human being, basically the same as me. Sean's basically the same as me, you know, like... So when he's on his own and he, like, cleans his teeth and he catches his eyes in the mirror, does he sort of go... Oh, God! <laughs>
all those terrible things. Israel is is wrong-headed about this. They've gone way too far. You're Instead, wrong. Instead, we've got weird They haven't Al gone Yankovic. far enough. They've shown too much restraint. They just says things to me. You've shown too much restraint. You exactly. militarily take them out. What are you, you, you going to do? Hey, tell me how what you do they're it. Doing now? They're doing take it. 15 seconds. They're doing do it. it. Right there. They're, what they're doing now is no about right. Oh, actually, it's about right. Sorry, I got I got excited. I'm Sean Hannity. I remember I lived with an idiot inside my brain. It, it's tough being me. Geraldo, if 3,000 rockets were fired into America, you'd I've be leading the charge. Conflict. He's obsessed with these 3,000 rockets, Sean. And because of his vitriol and propaganda, here is some information that you should have about what's happening. The current conflict began with Hamas rocket fire. We hear that all the time, don't we? That's always in the news. Oh, it's Hamas, those rockets and everything. Israeli security sources, who spoke on condition of anonymity, assessed that Hamas had probably launched the barrage in revenge for an Israeli airstrike several hours earlier, which killed one person and injured three more. Before the start of the conflict, Israel arrested approximately 800 Palestinians without charge or trial, killed nine civilians and raided nearly 1,300 residential, commercial and public buildings. Israel wants a ceasefire, but Hamas doesn't. This is here all the time that Israel wants a ceasefire. Hamas leader Khaled Mishal said Hamas wanted the aggression to stop tomorrow, today, or even this minute, but they would like the, the blockade against Palestine lifted. He added, we will not shut the door in the face of any humanitarian ceasefire backed by a real aid programme. Also, there is a claim that Hamas rule, not Israel's blockade, is to blame for the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. Israeli officials have confirmed on multiple occasions that they intend to keep the Gazan economy on the brink of collapse. The military made precise calculations of Gaza's daily calorie needs to avoid malnutrition so as to restrict the quantity of food it allowed during the blockade. They made calculations of what the calorific requirements were and to keep it restricted. They're trying to keep people on the brink of poverty. It sounds to me like a really complex and ugly situation. I didn't find your informative segment very helpful at all, Sean. I didn't think you educated me at all. In fact, I think you obfuscate the situation more, provided more incendiary and emotive disinformation and confusion and hysteria that you couldn't even back up with a pre-packed panel. I'm telling you, Sean, it's... All right, it's, we gotta go. By the way, if you want Russell Brand to shut up, have Mark Levin attack him. It worked with John Stewart. <laughs> and then, at the end of it, Sean picks up a football and starts sort of joshing and playing, and that's what I find most offensive about this. They begin it with a pop song, they end it sort of joshing and mucking around and having a laugh when talking about really serious, difficult issues. To them, it's just a game. To them, it is just entertainment. That's what I find most difficult about it. Sean, you're a human being. Come back to humanity, Sean. You've, you've lost yourself, mate. Tonight you go and look in the mirror for a little while. Take a deep breath. Remember how you were as a child. Remember how you feel about the people you love. Remember that all human beings everywhere, they have those sensations and those feelings. And try to speak from a perspective of love, not from vengeance and hatred. Thank you very much to my panel, Jesus, the flowers, Gandhi, thanks for coming. That was the truth, thank you very much. a tool that is abused to fool you and to leave you scared and confused. Truths is like the news. If the news was true, I want some truths. Let's have some truths.